Welcome to a new day. Let's open our hearts and minds as we begin with God's word. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. The first reading is from Micah. With shepherd's crook, lead your people to pasture, the flock that is your heritage, living confined in a forest with meadowland all around. Let them gra- graze in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of Egypt. Grant us to see wonders. What God can compare with you for pardoning guilt and for overlooking crime? He does not harbour anger forever, since he delights in showing faithful love. Once more have pity on us. Tread down our faults, throw all our sins to the bottom of the sea. Grant Jacob your faithfulness and Abraham your faithful love, as you swore to our ancestors from the days of long ago. The word of the Lord. The the response or your psalm. Bless Yahweh, my soul, from the depths of my being, his holy name. Bless Yahweh, my soul, never forget all his acts of kindness. He forgives all your offenses, cures all your diseases. He redeems your life from the abyss, crowns you with faithful love and tenderness. His indignation does not last forever, nor his resentment remain for all time. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, nor repay us as befits our offenses. As the height of heaven above earth, so strong is his faithful love for those who fear him. As the distance of east from west, so far from us does he put our faults. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and sinners, however, were all crowding round to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then he said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that will come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the youngest son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he'd spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants who put put him on his farm to feed the pigs. And he would willingly have filled himself with the husks that were eating that the pigs were eating, but no one would let him have them. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired men have all the food they want and more, and here am I dying of hunger? I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired men. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we've been fattening and kill it. We will celebrate by having a feast. Because of his son, this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now the older son was out in the fields, and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what what it was all about. The servant told him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the calf. We've been fattening, because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then and refused to go in. And his father came out and began to urge him to come in. But he retorted to his father, All these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed any orders of yours. Yet you never offered me as much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his loose women, you kill the calf we've been fattening? The father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it was only right we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. The word of the Lord. Today's gospel is beautiful. Uh, it's a classic. It's the story of two sons, who one who runs away from the father's love and one who tries to work for the father's love. The prodigal son is one of the most powerful parables. It's the story of how we often struggle to come to our Lord. Yet I feel a reminder today of God's infinite divine mercy. How do you see sin affecting your life? So I know some people who see sin as the definition of who they are. And when they fall or make mistakes, they take, their, they take the cross all upon themselves. Then I see people who don't think 
that they have any need to repent or need God's mercy at all and they are beyond the Lord's help. And I know others who do everything they can to place the burden of their penance on themselves and live in fear of their sin to the point they live in fear all the time. Do you fall into any of these areas? I know I do. I always struggle with this and I've asked myself often, how does God want me to handle this sin? I think the Father's love and act of mercy in this gospel today says two things. One, you are, you are not your sin. You are my child and I love you as you are. And number two, don't, don't live in fear of me. Rather, demand the graces from me of what you need to live so that you can flourish. Today, as we, as a call to action, or as the Holy Spirit is um, really prompting us, um, when you fall down, think of this question, how do you react? If you run away, come back to Jesus in confession. If you are afraid, remember his love for you and reflect on the cross. If you are taught, trying to earn back his love in some way, remember the person he wants you to be and sit in his presence today, accepting you are enough.